All right, so um, take something in your hands, lean back, sit comfortable. Um, let this day pass by in your um, awareness. Some of you had a stress day, some of you had work, some of you have done some other struggle, engagement, and um, that's as the day was. And right now I invite you to come back into your body, into your sensed feeling of your skin. And the easiest way of including your busy mind and maybe some um, overwhelmed emotions is just that object what you have there in your hand just for yourself just name it shortly and what do you normally use it for or what could you use it for and might even have a look for what else is it possible to be used And then when you have labeled it and figured out an alternative purple or it's a real pur a purpose, alternative purpose or it's a real purpose, then I invite you to tap into the haptic. Is it sharp, pokey? The density, is it light or is it heavy? Round, smooth, rough. There are about six, seven different neurological differentiation you can just determine with your skin. And it doesn't matter how fast you move on that point. Slow it down by half and slow it down by half again. And that's because when you go under a certain speed, there is a part in your cerebellum switched off that allows the sensation to land in your feeling center. And it doesn't land there if you're going too fast. And then As most of you know what we're looking for, this tinglish electromagnetic sensation, this pleasant or even pleasurable experience. It doesn't matter where that is on your hand. Maybe your palms or between your fingers. And you find a spot that feels really good and just stay there. And just follow that experience of pleasure there. And experience at this point again with eyes open or eyes closed. Ever works better for you. Hmm. Important here is that you just realize for yourself is nothing to give, nothing to do for anybody, nothing to get, nothing to provide. It doesn't go anywhere, it's just the sensation. You might want to experiment with putting that object in one hand and stroking the hand or maybe holding the hand, holding the object in your hand and 
stroking over and feeling it. Whatever works better for you. Again, this field of experiment, experimenting your possibilities. comes up on feelings or thoughts or welcome. The resistance coming up, welcome. The main objection is just to realize that you are doing something for yourself towards a felt sense of pleasure, maybe joy, something that feels good. Without much meaning, just because you can. So while you're there in connection with your experience in your hands, I would like to invite you for a few moments to add another component into the mix. And just your listening, your hearing, what's the acoustic around you? What's the sound?
while you are in connection with your skin and moving. You might can even hear the sense, the sound of the object on your skin. Hmm. Slowly and gentle in your own speed, in your own time. Slow down till you stop. Stay there for a moment. If your eyes still closed, open them and bring them back to the screen. And. Uh, Today, we just want to talk a little bit about that, what we have touched on last Wednesday. The obstacles, the resistance, why is it difficult and so on. But first I would like to have a, a reflection. What did you notice? Did something come up? Did you get in connection with something? And I would like to start who would like to share the amazing experience that's what i want to talk about today <laughs> why why is that why is it so difficult actually and i think you said that jenny last time and you davida it's like why is it so damn hard to stop and just do it why is it so difficult actually to just pull the brake and just sit down just like <sighs> An, an interesting thing is that, um, and this is the way how I listening since I do that, is the difference between direct and indirect pleasure. And direct pleasure is literally what we just do here with the sensation. Yeah? And indirect pleasure, if you want to say so, in the three components of pleasure, and I know who of you have seen them in the course or have shown them, the meaning, the story, the context is so much more important. So, so, so the, the, the indirect route so has so much more priority in our daily life. Because what we do must have have a purpose. It must have have a context. It must have have a reason. It must go somewhere. It's just like it's a, it's a problem solving or we're doing something. And that thing is literally too simple for the mind to overrule when we are on a constant <laughs> run of purpose, of context, of ideas. And it's, it's just hard. And what you could do, like you said, Monica, sure, you, you could just put nice stuff around and then when you see that as a reminder, just grab them and just like, or set an alarm twice a day 
ignore one of them, but one you really do. Um, uh, on one point, what I have learned is as soon that has been really clicking in for myself, I started um, not sitting down anymore and doing it. I do that constantly. And when I have a conversation, I have something in my hands. If I'm sitting somewhere in a bus, I'm playing with something in my hands. If I'm not sitting on a computer, <laughs> I have something in my hands and playing with it. And um, does that mean I have constantly my attention more than 50% on the object and the inflow? No. But it reminds me and it keeps me going that I can bring my attention immediately there. Okay, so um, have, have, you, have you been um, in this one call where I talked about the three components of pleasure? So, so what I said now is that we give more um, priority to the indirect route, to the meaning, to the context, to the story, than we actually do to the sim stimuli, to the sensed feeling. And I said that on one point is that this has to become an individual choice to make this um, stimuli your default and make the meaning and the context and the story and everything else secondary. But of course, if you need to have your mind functional and you need work stuff out, then you don't want to be disturbed. Then you just want to get fully focused and then you have your default on the on the context and the problem solving. But sometimes you can't solve problems with your mind by thinking them through because we just constantly go on that loop. But then sometimes taking something in our hands and just really sinking in and relaxing, that helps us just like to let the solution or the, 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 the idea come up that we couldn't work out while we're looping in our head. When you have your indirect route as your default open and when people come into your environment in proximity with you and you start to figure out that person, you start to make kind of context around what they say and how they operate, what they do and, and how, who they are and trying to adapt yourself to somebody else's way of being, then you have given yourself already away. Yeah? When, when, when you come with somebody in connection and you, you bring your default on yourself and you stay internalized in your own experience and you have a conversation and you figure out, okay, what's the intention being here together? then you can start asking questions. Why are you here today? What would you like to get out of it? Yeah. And then you stay focused on yourself and then you ask questions and then you listen to the person. You know, there's a certain set of questions that you can come up with, it's just like figuring out what do you actually want yeah, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe uh, the person has a desire that they want something for themselves. But this person might have even a desire that they want something from you. But what I would recommend is figuring out both. What does a person want for themselves? <laughs> what do they want from you? And you figure that out by asking the right questions. So when you take this object as, an, as a reference point, and bring that into the dynamic of the three minute game, so the four different ways of engaging, and you put that in that realm, who is doing the action, who is the action for, then it's pretty obvious when you are in action and the benefit is for you, that you're doing something similar like with the object, right? So you're doing and it's for you. So let's replace the um, subject of the object and the word doing with the subject of talking. Because you can replace who is doing the action, who is it for, with who is talking and who is it for. 
And the same dynamic works in verbal engagement. Who is talking and who is it for? And here comes the question, and, and, and it can be pretty challenging and provocative. How often do we talk and say something to others to make them understand something that they actually don't want to know? You know, when we have a tendency individually being being in the pleaser dynamic or give something because we just want to make an an impact or we 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 want to provide something that we're being loved we um, uh, do something good that we are acknowledged and uh, fitting in, in into a in, into a place you can do that on the same dynamic with talking yeah? and more like generalized spoken not to you only but to all of us and including me how often do we speak by thinking we want to say something and want to enrich the place by our wisdom. Or we want to enrich the place by we want people to like us and we want to say something really um, intelligent. How, how often do we really speak? I mean, you, you can break that down in question and answers. You know, you know probably about closed question and closed answers and open questions and open answers and how that sounds when you have a closed question yeah, a closed question for the one of you who don't know closed question is a question that you can only answer with a yes or with a no yeah. and then the closed uh, answer to this kind of question is yes or no but most of most of us, <laughs> I'm included. I'm totally guilty of that. So when somebody is asking a question that is a close question, answering a yes or a no, how much do we brabble and talk? <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> we just need to explain everything from all angles and just like, and 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 how much do we want to make it right for somebody else to understand? They just want to hear a yes or a no. So to come back to this other thing, if somebody is asking. An open question. How does it sound when you just answer an open question with a closed answer? Yes. <laughs> how does it sound when you answer an open question with a with a closed answer? Yes. So it's just like you can just challenge your own mind and just play with different dynamics and, and fi figure around that. But the thing is, most of the time when we think we talk and we want to enrich the room, but some people have not asked for us explaining and, and, and um, there is this saying about mansplaining. Right? Have you heard about that term? Yeah, we, we explain everything. I do it right now. <laughs> so when we um, not being asked to explain something, but we have this idea we need to explain the world, and then we're just like coming from this privileged position, we know everything, so I'm a know-it-all, and I explain everything to everyone. Yeah. But nobody has really asked for it. Um, how often do we talk? And I speak about myself and others in general. And thinking I do something so I explain and talk to make the world a richer place because I have eaten wisdom with big shovels. But if I'm honest and I just would just like look over my little soup plate, so um, what other people really look like or respond or engage when I talk, most people probably recognize that, hey, he's talking and is taking attention. Yeah? So when we talk, when we talk, without somebody else has really asked for it, or we have not said, hey, can I have five minutes and can I just brother it out what is just like lined up in my mind? And you just listen, can I have your attention for five minutes? Makes a complete difference as if I'm assuming that when I'm speaking, it's enriching the room. 
same dynamic, feeling and talking. When that was clicking in for me, I've started learn to listen and engage in my communication completely different talking with people. Yeah, and, and, and in, in kind of group situations and settings, you hear people who are dominating the place with talking. Yeah, without being asked, they're just like that. They're just they're just taking over the environment. Uh, so there's a similar dynamic then in the three minute game with who is talking and who is it for. Specifically, when you have an engagement with another person, and I, I, I did that with my partner in the past um, uh, a, a while ago, and that was, and, and we really tried and played with that. It's just like okay, if you don't ask me for anything, I'm not talking about anything. If you want to know something from me, you can ask me everything. If I'm not willing to say something, I will let you know. If I want to know something from you, don't tell me anything um, without me asking. If I want to know something, I will ask you to say something. But then the thing is, if I want to have the space to say what I want to say, I will ask you to listen for me for that time. And if you need my attention, ask me if I have the space. I normally have, but if I don't have, I will keep my limit. Of course, and then this is not replacing a conversation because in a conversation we have a, a, a deep level of back and forth, but same with the three minute game. You know, you don't want to live your, your world in the three minute game. And the same in the conversation part, you don't want to live your world in this dynamic who is talking and who is it for. But the same in the three minute game when it's related to touch, when you have that in place, it gives you so many reference points when you engage with another person on a physical level. Same on that level of communication when you have that in place, who is talking, who is it for. You probably become much more aware of yourself when you talk and when you don't talk and when somebody talks and when somebody doesn't talk. Now I would like to make that offer to Jenny because you started with that. So you would be the person who is talking. It would be for you and you would have the opportunity from um, five other people to get undivided attention. And if anybody of you will not like to give you undivided attention, yeah, then please feel free to switch your camera off, go to the bathroom, do a stretch. Or um, so, so I'm totally happy for the next five minutes, uh, Jenny, to give you my undivided attention and listening to your problem that you have and uh, use that as a reflection for yourself to mirror back what is important that you can't solve. Would you like that? Alrighty. Anybody else is not willing that, want to switch your camera off, you do it for yourself. I give my permission. You have five minutes completely for yourself. So I just want to give you that as an, as an example of somebody is talking for themselves, have undivided attention. You didn't need to explain anything to us that you don't want to say. You use us and our attention for your own benefit to reflect back what is, what is important for you. Yeah. So, so just as an example, if you have something where you would literally need somebody to, to, um, to listen to you, um, have you he heard about listening terms? Terms? Lis yeah. Listening terms, yeah? It's just like I still do that with friends on Zoom even or in person where I meet with somebody and say, hey, just like we have one hour together for half an hour. I just talk. I rumble and just really I just blabber it out. I don't need you to say something. I don't need you to interfere or to reflect or ask questions or anything else. Just listen. Give me your attention. That's it. And then the next half an hour you talk and I give you my attention. And I feel with you, I give you my empathy and feeling where you are, what's going on. And that I've noticed helps people to reflect on themselves where they are. Uh, I have a reflection. Can I share that with you? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, hear, I hear an ambivalence. 
I hear an ambivalence about uh, the value of autonomy, but as well there is a desire of connection. So th there is uh, there's there's a clear a, a clear no. And but this clear no. That is a yes to your autonomy, is not a no to that person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What I what what I would like to, what. Um, what I would like to reflect on this, sorry, my microphone. What I would like to reflect on this is, or how I would do that, I probably would totally acknowledge my no to moving away from I, my autonomy and completely live the full yes to my no and leave that open for just a week or a certain amount of time, just, just living my no that I respect my no and it might change into a yes or into a different answer. Anybody else has anything related to this very dynamic, either touching for yourself and feeling yourself when you're touching somebody or talking for yourself, getting somebody else's attention? Because this is where it always starts. This is, this is my experience. Yeah. It's like how much, how much are we allow ourselves to talk and filling up the space and having permission for that. Attention everybody, five minutes, I will talk, everybody is willing to give me undivided attention, can I talk and fill up the room? <laughs> Just imagine that would be really fun. <laughs> Anybody would, yes David. So, so I just, I started that in small steps um, and that makes it really, really difficult for me to socialize. So I was last Saturday on a party and I could not do that with, with normal people talking. and talk. It's just like, I was in a place that I just wanted to leave and I was like, okay, I stay in my discomfort and just suffer through, yeah, um, till I just found somebody I could have a real conversation with. And, um, but what I have learned in slow steps is when people start downloading their thing because I give my attention that I say, okay, do you need five minutes or do you need a certain amount of time? Do you want to have a listening? Yeah. Um, because I have five minutes, I can give you five minutes undivided attention where I'm listening to you, whatever's going on. Would you like that? So I make an offer from, hey, I'm listening to you. I give you my gift of attention. Would you like that? And then afterwards, would you like me to reflect? Would you like to have an opinion? Would you like to have a anything for me to say or would you like to leave it there? It's a complete game changer in communication. So, um, so this entire thing about consent and somatic consent is just all really fancy, right? But the thing is, it makes really sense when you have that in your, in your skin first, right? When you really have that on the somatic, neurological level in your skin, I'm here in action doing something for myself. And if I want to have that with somebody else, I need to ask them for permission. Hey, can I touch you? That makes it really obvious neurologically. But how, what's, what's the level of assumption that we're carrying when we're talking to somebody else? But if you would have not known that, and I would explain that to you, you would probably think, I don't know what you think, something different. Just like, yeah, but, you know, there's, there, there's so many reasons why we should listen when somebody talks or, or why it's much more beneficial that we ask for somebody else for permission. Hey, I've, I really had a shit time. Can you give me five minutes of undivided attention? I just need somebody to listen to me right now. I totally agree. It's really hard. <laughs> it's hard. And, you know, there's so many levels in life they are hard and there are so many levels in life they are uh, easy to do but in this four you know in this four different dynamics you know when you just see life in its total it's a big mush of everything all the time anyway you know there are shadows and there's enlightenment and then there are all the different aspects everything is in, in between um, but when you actually see that as well from this four different ways, who's talking and who is it for, 
um, we are all good in one or two of the four. Um, it's easy peasy for us and we are probably having more difficulties than the other two. Yeah. And then figuring it out, where is it actually where I'm enduring myself to somebody else's constantly blah, blah, blah. Where, why do I not stop people? Because I suppose to listen to somebody else's wisdom. <laughs> you know, just like when you're sitting on your, I remember that in the past, when you have your grandfather talking about something, and they're just, they just talk, 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 talk. And you just wonder, okay, when is it actually finally stopping here? I know you, Agneta, you have bought the book. I've seen it last time. Yeah. And for the one of you who have the book not in a, in, a, in a hardcover, you can download it in the Academy. There's a link on the left-hand side when you scroll down. And that's book orgasmic blueprint you can get it there as a, um, a epub or as a pdf um, feel totally entitled and welcome to share that with other people if you want to so it's a gift from me to the world here it is and there is in the book a chapter somewhere that calls who is talking and who is it for so i'm breaking down the entire dynamic about listening turns and, um, and how, how the dynamics work in all the four different areas. And um, just have a look. Um, so make, make use out of it to some degree. I just made the effort after Wednesday. I uh, sat and just recorded a five minute video and put that before or after the hands meditation. And I, I posted that on the Academy. But I, I, I can share that with you again because I love to talk about that. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, and I, I shared that on another equation. So we have all something in there that calls a pleasure ceiling in, in ourselves. Yeah, and that pleasure ceiling is, you know, we have all that in our hands and our skin. Yeah, this part in the brain is activated in the raw form of our um, neurological capacity. Yeah. And then we put over our lifetime layers of conditionings on top of that, emotional layers. And these emotional layers, they hang out somewhere between the, the feeling center and another center that calls the parental lobe, I think. Yeah? This is just like where everything is stored. When you as a kid touch a hot stove and then you put your hands away, is as a memory in the tissue is stored there and you never forget that because you never ever put your hand on a hot stove again yeah because your nervous system and your brain your memory is your somatic memory will tell you this is not good it's dangerous yeah and the same thing we learn under this capacity to touch and feel for ourselves that we have all this conditioning through, we have been all touched against our will before we could speak and it's more important what other people do to us than how we feel about that. That is putting layer on layer on top of that. So when you start going into that and you're feeling it, and if we would sit here for half an hour or an hour or something and just, just, really, just really going for it, you will come in connection with something. Either you come in connection with with grief you come in connection with with pain with with anger you come in connection with boredom you come in, with something you come in connection yeah and then the question is are you stopping there or are you going through it and you feel it all and this is what is what is what what I'm trying to say is that everything that wants to come up is welcome because once you had the experience that you can break through that pleasure ceiling, you will come out on the other side as a new version of yourself in relationship to your own pleasure. Does it mean that's the end of the story? No, that's just the first ceiling. There's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And at one point you just really don't care anymore. You know, when you come with awkwardness, with embarrassment, with shame and guilt and all that kind of bundle of discomfort in connection when you do it just like yeah great sorry i have right now i have a heat flash i'm just sweating i could just literally try to find a hole in the ground to disappear but i can be with that i don't need to self make myself wrong for it anymore
Yeah. So this pleasure ceiling, if this is not touched or broken through, this is the resistance that comes up that keeps you on the run, holding you away from feeling something. Okay, so the pleasure ceiling. So, so, so the ceiling is an internal resistance that you have that you don't like to feel about yourself when you're touching. And when you have not really touched the ceiling, this is what is in your normal, daily, rational, meaning-making, frontal lobe mindset present that doesn't let you stop and doing it. There's something that keeps you away from it. So if, again, if you would sit here now and start feeling yourself for, for half an hour or so, yeah, you would probably come in connection with some feelings, emotions. Yeah? And these emotions, this is what you, I've seen you, Jenny, one second. These emotions, you would probably come in connection with if you would do it but if you don't do it this specific sensation in your feeling keeps you away from doing it so 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 my inspiration my invitation my intention is that the object is all great and do more of that but where the stuff really is getting deep in your nervous system if you have like a listening turn somebody who is listening to you that you're talking that you have a touch body somebody that you can touch and feel yourself on within their limits that you can explain that first what you're going to do then you do what you ask for and then you re debrief what you have done yeah um, but when you when you have this frame of permission to doing it and feeling yourself you will come much quicker in connection with this um, discomfort if you have it and that gives you much, much quicker breakthrough, specifically when you have somebody who said just like, yeah, whatever comes up when you touch me for yourself, um, I'm here for you. So it's okay. You can feel whatever you feel. It's, it's okay. So, so I've done that for, you know, probably now 10 years in one-on-one -on -one session with people. So where I play the three-minute game for sometimes half an hour. So I, I, I give people half an hour permission to touch me. And they come in connection with this, just like, I have no idea what to do. Just like, feel yourself. Yeah, but that feels awkward. Just like, your awkward is welcome. Your shame is welcome. Let's break through that together. Yeah. So just, and then I want to want to explain that on another level. And that has blown my mind. I, I hope I can explain it good enough. And um and some of you might have heard that already. It's the level when we, when we feel, when we touch ourselves on an object, we release oxytocin in our system. Now, oxytocin is the, based on the serotonin pathway of um, contentment. Yeah, it's a specific set of neurons in your nervous system. When they're starting to get activated, they don't activate the neighbor neurons, they inhibit the neighbor neurons, neighbor neurons. What that does in your nervous system, in your emotional system, it tells you, oh, I'm good with what is, I don't need anything else, I'm, I'm good. What I have is enough, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah? So you, you create a level of contentment on the uh, serotonin level of your nervous system. Happiness is based on that. But what we all do, we just follow in the dopamine pathway. And the dopamine pathway is reward, it's excitement, it's the goal. And uh, what that does is there are different neurons. And the dopamine neurons, they um, inspiring the neighbor neurons. And that's why we need more of it all the time. Yeah? What, the, what the dopamine neurons telling your nervous system, oh, that's good, I need more. How, how can I get more? We, I need more of that. What that does is the neurons numbering up over time and that what gave you the amount of dopamine the last time is not enough. You need another level of dopamine input and that makes literally addiction or dependencies. And here comes the thing that the opposite of an addiction is not sorbity or avoiding it. The opposite of an addiction 
is connection and that's the this the oxytocin pathway is the the pathway of bonding and feeling so most people having a dopamine pathway up here of excitement and satisfaction and they have a very low level of um, uh, serotonin pathway of uh, contentment and when they start feeling something and I see that again and again and again and this is the hardest thing people with a high level of dopamine and satisfaction rate and you start feeling with them they say down here this is fucking boring I'm not doing that why am I doing that this is just like doesn't give me anything and and, the, and this is the way how they speak just like I'm getting fucking really annoyed and angry here so I'm not I'm not doing that yeah what is happening this level between the serotonin pathway where, where they can't reach this level up here and the dopamine pathway this gap in between you can call that I call or I call it and you can call it differently but you can call it the same way I call that the desert of boredom yeah the desert of boredom yeah, you're getting bored about yourself you're not getting bored about anything else you're bored about yourself and to bridge this this needs practice sorry to say that but you know I cannot do that for you in five minutes bridging through that but what happens is over time if you when you don't follow your excitement and um, satisfaction pathway you will level them out and you come to a place of contentment and when you reach that in connection with another person in proximity feeling yourself while you touch them you literally rewire your entire capacity of your brain your nervous system is, is, is um, functioning, is firing in a different way. So, 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 so this kind of what I call the desert of boredom, you can call that for some people the, the this thunderstorm of unexpressed anger or the, the ocean of grief or um, the, 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 the overwhelming joy of ecstasy. <laughs> you can call it as you like. Uh, there, there are different ways, and that's that. This this gap, this is what is in between. This is your. This is the resistance. So, it's time. I see. I would like to invite you to take an object in your hands. Bring your attention to your sense in your skin. Keep your eyes open. Stay in connection with the screen, and we're doing a check out. Why are you feeling yourself? in connection with your hands. Who would like to start? What's your takeaway of the day? What has been resonating most with? And what would you like to say to check out a feeling or whatever you want to say? 